Hi everyone, in this video I'll be discussing a Factory 5 Racing 818 kit as a possible option for my build. Hi everyone and welcome to the channel about building a kit car and other car topics. If you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification button below and share with others on social media. If you've not seen my last few videos leading up to this one, please go to the links below and see how I started my journey. Well, if you saw my last video, you now know I can't afford to build a GTM kit. So I started looking at this other sleek race car Factory 5 has called the 818. This kit starts at 10K, needs a donor, and looks like a cross between a Porsche and like a 370Z maybe. The donut car is based off of a Subaru Impreza WRX, and you use a lot of it, more than any other Factory 5 kit. It is almost if you are dismantling the car and rebuilding it on a new frame and body. Probably not exactly true, but, but close. Everything from seat belts, radiator, steering, pedal, whole drivetrain, door hinges, you name it. So let's say you could pick up a used donor for 5K, then you add 10K for the kit. You need paint and such, but it could be possible to get this thing done for under 20 grand finished, which is definitely awesome. The car is lighter, and so it will be faster, and it's really built for racing. In fact, all the Factory 5 cars, their frames and suspension and such are all built for racing. And if you understand the Impreza market, there's a lot of pimped out engines since they race these cars. You know, Miatas and Imprezas are raced all over the world. So you could get a good deal on them and have a really nice race car. Now, the 818 comes in three different body flavors. There's a Spider with the open cabin. There's a Coupe, which is the typical looking car, and a full-on track race car. The most expensive being like 12999 starting price. So recently, my friend Carl took me to an indie type racetrack where he races Miatas. And I've never been on a racetrack in a car, just motorcycles, and that's another story. And so we took the Miata to a track day, and there were only a few cars out on the track, uh, very well spaced out, and went out a bunch of times with different drivers and had a lot of fun. Then I went out and he was teaching me how to drive and, you know, drive the course and do donuts and learning about weight transfer and you name it. I did pretty good. So about a month later, there was this race day and he invited me out. And I was like, sure, I'd love to come check it out. So while we're there, he asked if I wanted to go out with him during a warm up run. And I'll be honest, it scares the shit out of me. But I was like, eh, you know, you live once, just do it. So I geared up, got the helmet on, hopped in the car with him. And, you know, remember, the last time I went out there, there was two or three cars out on the track. And now there's 25 to 30 cars on the track. And even though this is just warm up, they aren't dicking around. They're hitting 90 miles per hour in the straightaway with a car five feet in front of you and then slamming on the brakes and all the cars bunch up like an accordion until there's like 20 miles per hour with five inches in front and behind. And uh, man, talk about white knuckling it the whole time and trying to put my feet through the floor, just like, ah. And uh, of course, you know, there's a bunch of amateur drivers and people in cars cutting us off in the straightaways, which is against the track rules and such. And so that's when I kind of learned that I like fast sports cars, but I have no interest in racing. Track day is cool because it's me against the course and it's on my own terms, but racing against other racers, clipping fenders, and no, no interest at all. So, oh yeah, and then <laughs> I just remembered, we were hitting a tight corner and it was like a super hardcore left turn and there was this guy in front of us and he was kind of flailing around. We could tell like he was really amateur. And as, you know, imagine this is the front of his car, here's the back, and we're behind him and we're cruising by. And as we're making this left turn, this guy spins out in front of us and he's looking out the side view mirror right at us. And we just like drove through it. Like we stayed on our line and he just spun out like a door opening 
And we just went right through. And it was just like, it was so surreal. It was like we were on a movie set. It was crazy. So, <laughs> it's just nuts. So, the more research I did on the 818, the more I realized it's really for racing. And since Subarus are raced all over the world, you could send this kit to anywhere in the world and, you know, get a local donor. But it's too tight to put AC and heat into it. And some of the luxuries I would want in a car... You know, I want seats and I, you know, nice plush seats and I want AC and I want heat because I'm in Arizona. And and then all of a sudden I'm sitting there going, uh, hold on a second. I already own this car and it's sitting in my garage. It's my Lexus GS300. It's sporty. It's luxurious. It has a great stereo and heating and air conditioning and, you know, everything you would ever want. So why would I be building a car to be just like that? Well, that's redundant. That's stupid. So I kind of finally figured out that this is not the car that I want to use. Uh, if you're into racing and you love the Subaru drivetrain, then this is a freaking excellent car. And if you're on a limited budget, it's a great car. But it's not what I'm looking for. So again, more to think about. Stay tuned for the next video in where, yep, I finally get excited about a kit. Please subscribe and hit the notification buttons below and share online. And until next time, have a great day.